Welcome to my program, Bashir's Corner. In this program, we invite guests and discuss with them issues which mainstream media doesn't want, doesn't care, or maybe they are afraid to discuss those issues, but we do. Denmark prides itself for being a secular society that respects all its citizens, where religion does not play any part in the running of the state affairs. But reality, as always, does not support this claim. There is a large Christian cross in our flag. Our constitution demands that the king or the queen has to be a member of a Lutheran church. State also collects a tax, which is called church tax. They say that 85% of Danish people are members of Lutheran church. The state pays for the construction of churches and even half the salary of the priest who work in the churches. And to top of it all, we also have a Christian political party and a Christian newspaper. It means that Christianity does play an important part in the society and I personally believe that Danes should accept it and acknowledge it because it is something good. So what role the priests play in the development of Danish society over hundreds of years and how they talk about respecting, accepting and protecting ethnic minorities who live in Denmark for many, many years. To talk about all those things, I have invited one of the most activist priests in Denmark. Welcome to my program, Mr. Borg Hansen. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I would like to begin our conversation okay. by saying it would be a good idea to remove the cross okay. from the Danish flag, Danbo. Oh. In that way to mark the new multicultural mm. and multi-religious Denmark. It's a new situation without a cross in the flag. Okay, well, that is a very radical, revolutionary statement. Let's talk about that later. Thank you. Mr. Bork, you are a well-known personality uh, who speaks up his mind, as you did, just did now, <laughs> on social and political issues. How come, as a priest, you got involved in these issues? As a human being, it's a duty to take responsibility for your neighbor. Mm. And it also includes uh, political and social issues. Mm. And it has always been so for me from uh, the beginning of my life uh, that it's very important that you are not only a single person, mm -hmm. but you belong to the other. And that is what Jesus said? Yes. He said that it's the most revolutionary mm -hmm. uh, who has said, love thy neighbor. He doesn't say, please look first who you, who you should uh, love, but you have first to love and then ask, who is mm -hmm. my neighbor? But a very famous priest, your colleague, uh, Son Krarup, uh, he actually said, I saw very recently an interview with him, and he has been saying for many years, thy neighbor does not mean people from Syria or people from Pakistan or Afghanistan. Thy neighbor means the one who's living beside you, meaning Dane. Yes, because he is afraid, uh, he is afraid for the strangers. Mm. Uh, Jesus said, love thy neighbor, uh, there are no borders. It is an absolutely duty. Mm. As with uh, a Samaritan he told about, exactly. you know the story. Yes, 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 yes. And it was a stranger who helped uh, the Jew. So it means that he has, un he has not understood the real message of Jesus Christ. He has not understood. Okay. So why did you uh, decide to, to become a priest and not go into politics? Because you are a very political person. <laughs> I never thought of uh, going into politics. Mm. 
Uh, my father was a priest, ah. and uh, we are five siblings, and s three of us are priests uh, in the Danish uh, people's church. So I had it from the beginning in me. From your dad? Yes, I'm grown up with that. Are, it's a private question. Are your brothers also so revolutionary as you are? Um, are they I different? think they have to speak for themselves. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we leave it like that. Okay. Uh, since you took a very firm stand uh, against injustice and oppression, uh, you could have done that also by joining a political party. I know you didn't, but um, you will have a bigger base instead of only church congregation. Then you will have a big party to... The fundamental base for me is a single individual. I it see. is always hmm. a single individual who can move the things. Oh. It's very important for me. Hmm. And you can also see how difficult it is today with politics. True. You can say, uh, if you separate hmm. politics and ethics, what is then no. bad? There is only tactics. Hmm. And therefore, I think it's very important where you come to act as a, an individual person. Hmm. I think it's very important for me uh, what the Norwegian poet Arnolf Øverland okay. said in his very famous poem, uh, You Must Not Sleep, from 1936, under impression mm -hmm. of Nazism mm -hmm. and fascism. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, you must not endure so very well the injustice that does not affect yourself. Oh. Very moving words, very moving words. Um, after the, uh, your studies as being a priest, because it's a long study, um, where did you start your career as a priest first? I started my uh, career in a small country, Paris. Okay, uh, in Jutland? Uh, here in Zealand. Okay, in Zealand. Uh, and uh, later on I moved mm. uh, to Lyngby, a suburb to Copenhagen, where I uh, had my uh, career mm. until I finished. Okay, same place. So I was uh, I was in Lyngby 30 years. Wow. And I say it was the top of my life as a priest. Mm. It was there I met the refugees and it changed my life. Mm. I remember that very well. <laughs> 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 then my question to you is, uh, is Denmark a Christian country or not? According to the constitution, yes. which is more than 150 years old, mm. uh, the Danish country is a Christian country. Okay. At that time, Denmark was a homogeneous mm. country mm. or society. Mm. This is no longer the case. So, then can we say that today Denmark is an inter-religious society, intercultural society? Yes. Uh, today uh, we have a, a multicultural, a, a multi-religious mm -hmm. uh, society. Mm. Uh, and, and it is the new Denmark. Yes. And we can't continue with the old Denmark. No. It's a new, sh new situation. And we should accept it? Yes, of course. Okay. In Denmark, uh, as I said before, and uh, that 85% of Danes are member of Danish Lutheran Church. Okay, you can get out, but normally you, you are a member. Yeah. But when I, I, I live in Fredericksburg, close to a church in Gotha yeah. yeah. And believe me, I feel very sad that it is almost empty. There are no people coming to church. How can these two things relate to each other? A Christian country, and nobody goes to church. Yes, uh, yes, <laughs> it's a paradox. Mm. It is an open invitation mm. to attend. Okay. But maybe uh, the number of church attendance is not the only way to measure uh, uh, the religious feelings of a people. True. But I often, often uh, thought 
have uh, uh, this opinion, uh, as you say, why don't they come? Mm -hmm. But it's a free, uh, it's free if you want to go or not. No, but what happened? Why? I, uh, I mean, to, uh, 50 years back, there were churches were filled. People used to come to churches, not only when you die or when you're confirmed, <laughs> but also on Sunday masses, you know, and even some other time you go. Then what happened then? Why Danes have become so nonchalant when it comes yeah. to church? Maybe, maybe we are more secular today mm. uh, in Denmark. Okay. It's all over Europe. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's very difficult to, to look into the heart. But don't you feel sad being a, being a priest that there are not bigger congregations? Whether th there are one, two, ten or hundred persons, mm. you have to say the same. Exactly. You have to say the same, but then your message goes uh, to a bigger audience. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then again, uh, Danish uh, state collects tax from your actually income. You know, it goes yes. directly. Yeah. And then we have a secular country, as you, you just said. Yeah. Why this contradiction? Then why just leave people alone and not take their taxes? Yes. As long as we have the old constitution, okay. uh, where state and church belong together, mm. it has been a part of the constitution that the state supports the church. You can read it in the old constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, the evangelical Lutheran church is the Danish people, people's church yes. and is supported as such by the state. Hmm. I that's have read that in the constitution, that's yes. what I'm saying. <laughs> you can read it there. Yes, yes, yes. I was very surprised. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> but I find it a contradiction, you know, that we run around with the flag of secularism and, you know, and state church, nothing to do with each other. At the same time, you know, we collect taxes, go yeah. state tax. Yeah. It is a contradiction. It is. Yeah. If we change mm. the old constitution, mm. Of course, things would be and will be different. Do you think it will? And be I hope we change. <laughs> Let's hope that. But as, as long as Danish People Party is sitting in the power, <laughs> it is difficult. Yeah. You became known in 1990s for helping 29 rejected asylum seekers to go underground. Yes. Uh, why did you do that? It's a, it was a political act, actually, not a religious act. They knocked. Uh, on my door mm. and asked for help. Oh, yeah. And uh, when they came and knocked on my door, uh, uh, I had to help. So it was. Mm. So it began. They uh, they came. The persons uh, there came many persons mm -hmm. and and asked for help, and they convinced me that they were in danger, and uh, that I had to help them. And I first tried on the normal way, uh, on the democratic way, to say to the politicians, please help them. Mm. But they thought he's crazy. But many uh, politicians called your action as disobedience of the law. Yes. And um, um, what was your response to such charges? What did you say to them that uh, why, you, why you are doing that? For me, uh, there is something uh, that is more important than the law. Mm. It was a conflict, a conflict between uh, the state's uh, laws yes. and my uh, con uh, conscience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and there I had to follow uh, my conscience and help them. And your heart. And yes, and follow my heart. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm. They call it uh, civil disobedience. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's a, a question of that you have to take mm. responsibility. Mm. Who else it is who knocks on the door? But then you became also the first person or first priest to have been punished by, by the law in 1999, I, I remember. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the, the legal system treated you fairly? Yes. Mm. I was treated <laughs> correctly. Okay. Uh, when you break the law, you must be, be prepared the to take the consequence. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you are not up prepared to that, mm -hmm. then you shall not uh, okay. do so. But there was 
many priests, I think about 90 priests, who yeah. wrote a letter to the church minister at that time, Margaret of Vestia, and yeah. she, they actually supported you. Yes. And they said that it was wrong what she, what, uh, what she had done. What was the response of her? It was very short. Uh, Margaret of Vestia yeah. said, it is my decision. Oh. I am the head of the church. Yes. Ah. Uh, but nevertheless, she didn't uh, dismiss me. That brings me to uh, another question. Denmark is also one of the very few countries where they have a ministry of churches. Yes. Isn't it funny? <laughs> yes, it's funny. It's the old constitution. Okay. It will uh, uh, disappear mm. uh, when we get a new constitution for, for a new Denmark. Let's hope so. Then uh, you have also advocated that the border should be open and we should welcome people. We, we can't afford such a small country to have the whole world coming here and asking for <laughs> to live here. Can we? When you see a shipwreck, mm. you must help everybody mm. immediately mm. and not start asking who are they mm. or start calculating. Hmm. How many can I afford? I afford to help. Oh. They are fellow humans, hmm. human beings, hmm. and it is my duty to help as many as I can. So it means um, for you, anybody who is in need should be helped without thinking one or two or ten or twenty. Yes, it's not my problem mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how many we can be in Denmark, okay. how many people. Okay. It's God's problem. But I have to do what is my duty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're also very active in the grassroots NGOs. Uh, for example, um, there's an organization called Grandparents for Asylum. Yeah. Okay. Grandparents. Uh, uh, what kind of activities this organization does? Every Sunday, every other Sunday, yeah. uh, we gather in front of, uh, of the big refugee camp uh, in Sandholm, okay. the Center for Reception of Refugees in Denmark. Every second Sunday? Every second. In the beginning, we were every Sunday. Mm. Then we got a new government. Yes. But we understood it was not so much better. Mm. And we are still standing there uh, in front of Sandholm. Uh, some of us follow selected refugees mm -hmm. uh, on their way through the Danish a refugee system. Okay, you help them. Yes, and exchange experiences mm -hmm. uh, together. I, I try to help so many as uh, I can. They uh, they phone to me. They they call for help, and I try to help. Uh, you also have done research in Son Kirkego. Yeah, I tried to read him, but it was impossible. <laughs> it's very difficult to read. What appealed to you in his uh, in his uh, works? What what is so appealing about? Naturally, it? you know that also Muslims yes. uh, are reading Jean Kierko. Yes. Uh, the fundamental uh, when uh, uh, when you read Jean Kierko, mm. uh, his basic idea is the idea of responsibility of the single individual. Okay. He is called the father of existentialism. Yes, it's true. Uh, it's the single individual who can change mm. the things. Mm. And he finished his authorship mm. with an attack on the Danish church yes. and wanted a divorce between state and, the, and church. Very revolutionary. And under the church at attack, he yeah. died. Yeah. But it was, he finished by saying that. Mm, I read an article in information written by Safat, uh, he's a Bosnian uh, who lives here, he's yeah. a philosopher. And in that, it was a very beautiful quotation from Son Kierkego where he said, what he likes in Mohammedanism, because at that time they call it Mohammedanism, yeah. uh, is that God comes halfway and an individual comes halfway. And they ah. meet, and they meet in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's a beautiful quotation, you know. Uh, Safed Bektovic yes. is a very a famous 
at Søren Kierkegaard scholar. Yes, yeah. And now he's a professor in modern Muslim philosophy in Norway. Oh, he's yeah. a good friend of mm. mine. Okay. He opened uh, my mind mm. for Muslims. Uh, you have also uh, told people to read Desmond Tutu's book, God is not a Christian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How as a Christian priest can you, <laughs> can you advocate that? Yeah, it was also a provocation for you, oh, for, for me. Yes. Uh, 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 Desmond Tutu's book uh, has a title, God is not a Christian, and other provocations. Yes. He, he knew that he would uh, provoke uh, people on yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, it is important for Desmond Tutu to say God is not only God for Christians. That is true. Uh, God created all human beings, mm -hmm. whether they are Jews, uh, Christians, uh, Muslims, or whoever. Or Hindus or Buddhists, yes, whatever. All. You can't see a human being uh, for whom God is not God. And, and also because God is called Almighty yes. in, in many scriptures. So it yes. means that he's God for everybody, not only for certain people. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, in Denmark, there's a big network of anti-Islam priests. Yeah. Uh, they are over 100, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not a religious person, but I love what Jesus said, what Prophet Muhammad said, what many other prophets said yes. about peace and harmony. Yeah. Uh, is it not against uh, Lord Jesus' uh, teaching when we that those priests are involved in anti-Islam activities? I think they don't live on this earth but on another planet. Uh, okay. We can't live here uh, without contact mm. with other human beings mm -hmm. and, we, and, 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 and have another uh, background. Mm -hmm. uh, they suffer from fear of contact. Uh, they will rule over the face mm. of others mm. instead of belonging together in our uh, diversity. Exactly. It's very important to say no mm. to them. Yeah. And you have been saying no to such people. Uh, I have looked at the uh, official uh, Danish pastor promise, you know, they have this. Uh, <laughs> it says that a priest should, after his her ability, resist abuse of the sacred means of grace and fight such doctrines that contradict the creed of the people's church. Now, as you say, uh, some priests consider it as their opportunity to fight against Islam because that is what the, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the church uh, creed says. Um, don't you think we should change this now? As you say, the time have changed. I don't think that the world need more crusades. Uh, and uh, uh, the important thing is that we have what we have in common mm. uh, rather than to fight each other. Mm -hmm. It's very important for me to say the Muslim people, uh, they are a gift to mm. Denmark. Of, like of like, uh, like uh, Bent Melcha also, the, the chief rabbi former also says that. Yes, <laughs> and, and the Pope, he said, Beautiful, when he yeah. came to, to Lesbos, yes, yes, yes. he said, uh, forgive us, you are a gift, not a burden. Wonderful. And he took uh, 12 Muslims mm -hmm. uh, back uh, uh, to, uh, with him to uh, the Vatican. And State. he also visited a Muslim family yesterday in Milan. Uh, so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Then tell me, uh, don't you think there is a huge need now to have a network of Christian uh, priests and imams and uh, so that they can work together and very visibly so people can see that priest and imam can work together? It would, would be a good signal to mm. send mm -hmm. uh, to make a network of Danish priests and Danish Muslims so that we can see, so, so that they can see we cooperate. Why don't, why don't you start that? Because you are the right person for I am ready to start together with you. Okay. Yeah. I can talk to some, some imams. It yeah. would be a great idea, I think. Yeah. Um, you meet sometime uh, some imams, you know, some, yes. uh, some uh, Muslim imams yeah. and Jewish rabbis for interfaith work. Yeah. And this interfaith work, is necessary for, for, for Denmark now, as you say, the, yes. the, the, the situation has changed. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But in your opinion, uh, the media also plays a big role. Yeah. That people fighting, saying a lot of uh, contradictory things. Yeah. How should, um, the, the only thing the politician and media should live up to their responsibility and not spread uh, anti-Islam hatred and, and Islamophobia. There may be imams and, and priests and rabbis can work together. Yes. Uh, I would like to use the example as we all know. Yes. With the caricature of the Prophet. Yes, in 2006. Yeah. 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 Uh, to me, it is very important never to taunt the face of others. Mm -hmm. I don't like when a majority taunts a minority. Mm -hmm. It was a big mistake with the caricatures. I couldn't understand that Denmark could do so. Okay, okay. That what you that what you are saying is to Danish people. Then I would like your opinion. Yeah. If you have to say to the Muslim communities. Yeah. What should they do so that they are accepted in the Danish society? I think it's very important to say, don't be afraid. It uh, it's it's very very important to communicate mm. when you. When you s sit here and uh, speak together, you see the other person, mm -hmm. and okay. that's very important. It is the in the interaction that uh, that reconciliation, uh, 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 con uh, inter uh, understanding begins. There, it begins that we sit together mm -hmm. and on that way uh, find each other. Mr. Brock, with such a beautiful message, I thank you from my heart that you have come to my program and give this beautiful message of peace. And I would also say to my viewers, listen to this wise man and create a Denmark where religion, culture, nationality, ethnicity doesn't mean anything, but humanity means everything. Until next week, take good care of yourself.